All right, what's going on, everyone? Just want to do a quick trade recap for um, December 2, 2022, which was the uh, previous Friday. Um, I didn't do it the same day because I was a little bit busy. And normally on the weekends, we like to uh, post the reviews later in the weekend, kind of get everyone, uh, you know, situated and back in tone for the new week. Um, so my goal with this is to kind of just go through my trades, um, show you my trades and, you know, kind of walk you through what I was thinking and, you know, walk you through my take profits, my risk. And, you know, hopefully someone can benefit and learn something from either something that I've done right in my trades or something that I've done wrong in my trades. So with that being said, let's dive right into it. So one of the trades I took on Friday was Pally. You could see Pally has this nice five minute flag setup. You can see high volume push, descending VPA. A lot of buyers tried to get in on this one right here. And you could see by this big volume stick that, you know, it was actually a failed breakout. We did have the five that made a new high and we did flush. And that's something I failed to notice. Um, the reason why I was interested in Pally is because if we go to a 15 day four hour, you could see that this pivot was a significant level. This 435, you could see it was resistance over here, resistance over here, over here, over here. And also this 445 level was also a major resistance point. You could see that if we cleared over these levels, we would have some range up to $5, 544s. These are probably from smaller time frames, which is why, you know, they're not lining up over here on a four hour. Um, but with that being said, I seen this setup and um, I actually got long on this, you know, stuff candle right here. You could say I was trying to catch the knife. Um, but the reason why I got long over there is because I wanted this 435 pivot. I didn't want to play this one off the 445 pivot. I wanted this pivot right over here, 435s. And that's the pivot that I got. I did take some right up here into 445s. I got 447 average, I believe. No, I'm sorry, I got 442 average. So on the one minute when we started breaking that 445 right over here, that's when I got long. So I had 442 as my first ads. And then when we finally got that push into our 435 pivot, this is where I started adding more. So I got my full size on at 437. That would be that would have been my average. And, you know, ultimately we had a nice pop into, you know, 443s. But as you can see, we just ended up giving that pivot right out and ended up making a new low right here. So my risk was actually off the bottom of this candle, this five minute candle right over here. It closed. We start pushing up into 443s and then we just start flushing. And right when we flushed, I took my remaining piece off at four dollars and twenty seven cents. So I got a little slippage on it. That's because, you know, it was moving really quickly. Um, there was quite a spread on this one. You know, there wasn't much volume. You know, something that I always preach is, you know, make sure the volume is there. And, you know, sure, the flag setup was there. But if I look left, like, realistically, this just makes me think, you know, some some chat room was on it, you know, before I was on it. And that's what caused this, you know, whole move over here. And they ended up just getting out of their position. Because if we look left, you know, there's not really much volume at all. Um, if we go to the daily time frame, you could see, you know, it's not a day one setup. It's kind of a back burner play. You know, we had a nice move here, another nice move here. And then, you know, we tried to make a nice move um, on Friday, which, you know, it just didn't work out. So that being said, you know, this was a losing trade. Nice five minute flag. I should have played it off the 445 and just risked off, you know, the 440. This would have been, you know, the clear pivot. But I just wanted that 435 area because of this over here. I wanted that test of yesterday's highs. And, you know, ultimately you could have even played off 420s, but as you could see, volume just died out on this name. So, um, got a rewrite of my journal to, you know, continue focusing on the volume and, you know, staying patient and, you know, just executing on the right ones. Um, another trade that I took on the day on Friday was CTIB. And CTIB was a, it was a nice one. Um, so, you know, we have this, you know, high volume push through our 58 resistance. And then we have our daily level of 63 cents right over here. You could see daily level 63 cents right in this area. Well, 63.9, 64 cents right in that area. And I actually got long on the one minute pullback into this area. So right when we broke through 63s, we pull back into our 64, 63, nine pivot. And I actually got long at 66 cents. So once we start showing some strength over here, I actually got long right here, 66 cents. 
and we had a crazy pop into 74. I started peeling some off immediately right through high a day. I was getting filled 71, took some off 72. Then ultimately this candle on the one just came all the way back down. You could see the volume was kind of really, really quick. And then I uh, ended up taking the rest of my position off at 67 cents. So kind of break even on that last piece, but this was a really nice push up. Looking at it now, you know, the setup really wasn't the, you know, the, the most solid setup you could say. But if you look at the volume, you know, we have a high volume break through it. They try to stuff it, you know, it doesn't go anywhere. Then you can kind of see this volume over the 64 pivot is kind of very low. So that's kind of what told me, okay, you know, here's another very low pullback into the pivot. Let's see if buyers step in. Buyers did step in on the tape and I was able to get myself in a position right over here. And we were able to profit some on this position. Had a high of 74 cents, but it was really, really quickly. Um, it was one of those ones that, you know, if you looked away and you came back to your screen, you probably would have been getting out for a loss. So uh, this one was really, really quick. Started to set up a nice three minute flag here. You guys can see over that 64 pivot. I was looking for the 58 pivot. Um, I was talking to Dom about this one and we were looking for that 58 pivot, you know, five minute flag into 58. But ultimately it just wouldn't break the 64. And then that's when I was like, okay, what's holding this 64? That's when I went over to the daily and I found this pivot over here. And I was like, okay, really low risk trade here, you know, kind of setting up that three minute flag. You could see on the one minute, the pullback into the pivot, very, very low volume. So I was like, all right, you know, I'll take a stab here. We'll try and get a quick scalp out of it. You know, looking at the daily, we're kind of, you know, having a dead cat bounce here. So I wasn't really expecting too much out of it. But, you know, if momentum did start coming in, you know, we could have started breaking these points and, you know, testing 80s and, you know, 90s and, and so on. That would obviously require high, higher volume, something, you know, we didn't really have here. But, you know, I guess you could kind of say um, I kind of got lucky, you know, exiting this one really, really quickly like I did. Because if I just held and, you know, waited for that 58 test, ultimately I would have just been sideways all day. And then, you know, we would have eventually faded. I think I played this one pretty well. Um, another one I played on the day, so we went over Pally, we went over CTIB. Another one I played on the day was RIGL. This one actually had a really nice five minute flag setup. Uh, was looking for pre-market highs, was looking for the dollar break. Take you to the daily real quick. You could see if we get over a dollar, you know, we have room to a dollar five. Then, you know, we kind of have this minor gap fill to a dollar ten. Then, you know, we could obviously start opening up, testing the 115s, 120s, you know, etc. Um, obviously, you know, it didn't happen, but uh, let's go over the setup real quick. So you can see right over here, we have a nice five minute flag forming over this 94 pivot, which was kind of pre-market support over here. We broke below, kind of acted as resistance a few times, even over here. And then finally into the open, we got the high volume push through that 94 resistance, right through our initial high a day, which would have been 96. And then we started putting in that five minute flag. You can see the descending volume going into the 94 cent pivot. And this is where I started to get long. Um, I know Herb was on this one. I know Mikey was on this one. Really, really nice flag. Um, ultimately, you know, it just didn't work out. So I got my first ads in right over here at 90, uh, 96, right into this pivot. I thought maybe we would do like a quick pullback into initial high a day and then, you know, start continuing higher. Um, we start breaking this 96 pivot, added more into 96s, got my average down to 96, uh, 96.3 and I was risking off this 94 cents. So I was risking about two cents to see if we can get that push up to a dollar. Pretty good risk to reward in my opinion. Um, like I said, you know, ultimately, you know, it was really, really nice over here. Really nice descending VPA. I should have been getting long off this 94 pivot. That would have been the better pivot to, you know, get long off of. But, you know, I took my ads where I took my ads. That's where I, you know, was confident in the position. That's where I felt like we could get some continuation. And ultimately, you could see we gave out this 94 pivot. We did have a pop into 97. Um, don't believe I took any off into 97, but let me just double check just to make sure. R-I-G-O. Yeah, it doesn't look like I took any off when we got the push into 97 cents. 
I did cut the rest off on this 94 break though right over here you could see you know the volume was descending into the pivot and then right here on this candle when you know the volume starts picking up I can see that's where I actually cut my position also lines up with VWAP with the 94 cent pivot and once we broke that I cut my position for a loss I got filled 93 fives on some and got filled 92s on some it was kind of a quick flush so this one was a loser on the day and uh, so, so far on all these trades, you know, majority of them were either little wins or uh, tiny losers. And then let's start going into, you know, what changed the day, what kind of turned everything around. Went over CTIB, OTIC is one we got to go over. Um, OTIC, this one was a five minute flag setup into the open. Started holding over pre-market highs. Ultimately, this one did fail. Um, I got some off, you know, into 17s, but I'll get into that right now. So OTIC, you can kind of see we have this pre-market high, also initial high a day. And then you can also see that we have the, re oh, what happened there? We have the really high volume push through our initial high a day. A lot of strength on this candle, about a 2.1 million volume candle. I'm interested now. I want to see this thing flag into our 16 pivot. Uh, we start getting that low descending VPA, not the, you know, picture perfect clean setup, but we do start forming a flag. Now, once we get this push all the way into here, into 16 sevens, this is where I get long. I get long into 16 seven. We have a move up into 17 fours. I took one piece off at 17, kind of to mitigate some profit. Always when you're coming up to high a day, you guys know I always preach this. Take some profit off in case this happens, in case you get rejected. You start coming down, your loss, you know, is kind of mitigated. You took some risk off the table. So the loss is not going to be that big. And if you cut it at the right time, you can honestly sometimes even walk out break even very, very tiny loss or very, very tiny green. So I always preach that take some off in front of high a day. That's exactly what I did. I take some off into 17s and then we start flushing down here, we start coming down, you know, having these pops into 17 again. And, you know, right over here, high, you know, 16 nines. Then ultimately we break the 16 five pivot and I cut my remaining piece at 16.2 right into this candle right when we have this bearish engulfing coming down you could see volume was a little lower on this candle and then volume started picking up over here that's when i got out of my remaining piece um overall this one was a little you know kind of break even small loss i would say but to me it's a break even uh like i said you know really nice setup took some profit off where i should have but ultimately you know we just didn't get that follow through and this was you know a backside play so you could see that, you know, if we got the 18 break, you know, we could push up into 20s and, you know, so on. Um, but it is what it is. You know, this is a setup that I would take any day. Um, so at this point on the day, I'm pretty much, you know, kind of red break even in a way. And then there's two trades that actually turn the whole day around. RMED was one of them that turned the whole day around. And this one was. I'm sorry, was it RMED? No, I don't think it was RMED. It was SHPH. Yeah, that's what it was. SHPH was the one that turned the whole day around. And then after this one, I kind of called it a day, kind of just, you know, chilled and hung out. So SHPH, really, really nice. Um, You know, I'll get into this one even on my, uh, on my Twitter because uh, there's, there's something I want to show you guys. Where is it at? Tweet deck. Um, so right over here, right over here, I was like, okay, SHPH letting the shorts get trapped here. Every time they short, there's no follow through over 220s. We can see 240s and even 280s. Long as we hold 195 area on SHPH, we will be fine. Now, let me get into why I thought that. So first I'll get into the first setup and then, you know, I'll, I'll progress and tell you guys why I knew, you know, shorts were obviously getting trapped in this one. And so the first setup that I played on this one was this five minute pullback into our 195, you know, $2 area pivot. You can see a nice high volume push, low VPA pullback. Sellers tried to stuff it here, but there was no follow through. So that was another, you know, kind of warning that gave me some strength. And on this one, I get long at $2.01 right into here. Add some more into 206. We get a nice pop into high a day. I peel some off at $2.10. Peeled more off into 217. And then ultimately we start coming down. And by this time I was out of my position. Took my remaining piece off at 208. 
And then that's when I realized, I'm like, okay, wait, hold on. Shorts are getting trapped in this one. Now, how did I know shorts are getting trapped in this one? Very, very simple. You could see we have this big stuff candle here, right? What happens after? Normally, you get a stuff candle. You want to see price start declining. You want to see it, you know, tank in a way. You know, that's that's what people say. You can see again, we come up here. They try stuff in it. No follow through. We come up here again. They try stuff in it. They stuff it, but there's no follow through. We're still holding our 195 area pivot. We come up again. They stuff it again. No follow through. We come up one more time and we stuff again and there was no follow through. And at this moment, this is where I got long off the trend line on the one minute time frame at two dollars and six cents right into here. I got long. I got up off my computer. I went downstairs and had some breakfast. I was on live with my buddies and I was telling them SHPH is going to squeeze. And the reason why I knew this one would squeeze is simply because every time the shorts tried shorting this one down, there was no follow through. Shorts were getting trapped and there were too many buyers. They were absorbing all of the selling. And this is the result. We get a nice short squeeze into our daily resistance. You can see right over here why I was saying 250, 280s. Let's make this bigger so everyone can see. You can see this is our 250 area pivot. This is our 280 area pivot. So ultimately I was looking for the short squeeze into that area. So I get long again off 206. And this is where I get long, long. I was sitting in this position. I was waiting for this move and we finally got this move. So as soon as we have this move, you could see the volume just went from really, really low. Bam, buyers just tackle in on the shorts and squeeze them. As soon as we get this move, start peeling some off into the 220 areas, kind of because, you know, this is where shorts were really trying hard. And I remember looking at the tape for over here at this time and the buyers were just coming in. The buyers were going crazy. The shorts were so trapped and we get this parabolic move into 250s. Take some more off 247s right in front of 250s. End up squeezing into 268, but this one was really, really quick. I didn't even have a chance to get any off. And then fast forward and right over here, this is where I cut my last piece. Reason I cut my last piece is because if you see my trend line, you know how it goes across this, you know, the stock's clearly riding trend. Once we break trend on a bearish engulfing and, you know, we retest it on the five and start coming back down, I was like, all right, you know what, move might be done. We got a really, really nice move out of this. It was like a 20% win. I went ahead and cut my position off at 243. Uh, really, really nice trade. Um, when I was over here, you know, looking at all of this, I really wasn't looking at the tape. Um, a lot of people, you know, will figure out shorts are trapped because of the bidder stepping in. But to me, it was just clearly, you know, the, the price action. Price would get shot down, no follow through. Once again, no follow through. Once again, no follow through. Once again, no follow through. So just kind of looking at the candlesticks and the way the price was moving kind of told me, hey, shorts are starting to get trapped. This one might squeeze. We did have some squeeze potential. It was a low float. I'm not sure if it was moving on news, but we did have some range on the daily. And then moving into the after hours, um, right into the close, I'm like, all right, you know what? Let's put some back on. It was kind of a lotto, um, kind of a lotto, but I, I did put some back on. So right into the close. We get this pullback into 237s. I honestly added some up here at 248, right in front of the 250 resistance. We get a pop into 260s, didn't take any off. We flush into 237s. I end up averaging down on my position. $2.40 is my new average. Um, reason I put some back on is because I'm looking for the short squeeze. I'm looking for the move into three, you know, 320s and etc. If we look at the daily once again, you know, we have the range to start squeezing. And honestly, I'll, I'll be honest, I put on lotto size. I put on, you know, if, if this thing, you know, gaps down on me, it's not anything that's going to hurt me. But if, you know, we start gapping up and running, you know, I'll, I'll make some change. It's it's nothing crazy. Um, like I said, it's just a lotto position. I want to see where this thing goes. And you can, you know, you can see on the daily, you know, we have room up to, you know, 350s. I'm not going to say, you know, we're going to hit 378 $4, but, you know, who knows if shorts are really trapped and we really get squeezed. Could be a possibility, but I'm not going to put any price targets on it. I'm just going to kind of play the price action that I see in front of me. Um, with that being said, you know, I got my average down to 240. We have this pop right here into 250s, actually 256 as well. Take some off at 250 exactly. I was expecting, you know, that sharp move down again. 
And then ultimately, right into the close, we just start grinding up. Still didn't take any off. Still right in my position. I'm up 12% on this position currently. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how it opens up tomorrow on Monday. Um, but you could see, you know, this was my mindset over here. I was telling everyone 12.01 p.m. That was right over here. I was like, all right, let these shorts get trapped. They're clearly not, you know, bringing this thing down. Uh, a lot of people in chat actually caught this one. You can see this is another trader that caught it over here. They were talking about how, you know, um, they kept seeing this thing get shot down and they, you know, became uninterested. But someone like me that's more, you know, I guess you could say advanced in the stock trading and reading the starts, the, the starts, kind of reading the charts, um, knew that shorts were getting trapped and kind of seen more opportunity there. There's another person, they caught it, 195 average, sold the rest off 250s. They were like, thanks for the conviction. You know, they were happy, made, made a nice penny on it. Another one that played it really, really nice. Another one played it here. Then also they played it really, really nice. So a lot of people banked off this move. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can find my screenshot real quick. See, it's going to be Friday, 12.01 ish. Yeah, after this trade, the market kind of died off and um, I didn't really trade much after this. This was actually my last trade on the day. And this is the trade that actually made me the most money on the day. Actually took me from a little bit, you know, red break even um, to actually a pretty green. So I'm, I'm very proud of that. Um, let's see this 12 to 2 16 p.m. A little more. Almost there. Yeah, right over here. So at the highs, 244s, and I was peeling some off. Nice 19% win. So, you know, really, really cool there. A lot of people caught it in the Goblin Gang. Um, great trade. You know, we're always throwing our, our ideas out every single day. You know, I'll take you back to the mindset. You could see a nice one minute trend into new highs. This is where I actually got my ads off. You could see this line right here. That's actually my position summary. Um, and yeah, you know, that, that was the really, really nice trade on the day. That was really the main reason why I really wanted to do a recap. I had a lot of questions in my DMs about, you know, how did you know shorts were getting trapped? Did you read the level two? Um, so I'll cover it one more time. I didn't really read the level two. I did see some bitter step in down here. But, you know, the main reason that I knew this, you know, could, did have some short squeeze potential is simply the volume and, you know, um, the price action. You can see we'd come up, smack down, come up, smack down, come up, smack down, come up, smack down, but there's no follow through. You know, we're still holding our trend. We're still holding our 195 pivot. All these little things kind of tell me, okay, you know, shorts are, you know, beginning to get trapped. Something is brewing here. So that's why this name caught my interest. Played it really nice once, played it really, really nice again. And then, you know, we got that third position riding. We did take some off of it into 250s, but we got the rest riding. We're going to see what happens Monday morning with this one. Hopefully a nice gap up, hopefully some nice gains to share with you all. And uh, hopefully something to recap, you know, on Monday's recap, that would be uh, very, very nice. With that being said, I hope everyone has a, you know, a great Sunday and, you know, come prepared tomorrow and let's kill it. I'll be in the Goblin Gang sharing all my ideas. Peace out, everyone.